Hello, I am Richard, a reporter from the Citizen and Immigration Department of Canada, with the task to inform and explain the many human characteristics of Nunavut. Nunavut is cold and harsh, since it's located at the top of the Northern Hemisphere. The soil of the freezing territory is poor in quality and encased in permafrost. The vegetation is limited by the frozen soil, with only some strut and bushes being able to survive the brutal weather. However, through the unforgiving conditions, the territory reveals vibrant cultures and traditions of the human inhabitants. From its demographic statistics to its energy consumption sources to its immigration patterns, the people of Nunavut prove that their territory is more than a barren wasteland, but rather a community of people with interesting human characteristics. Nunavut demographically is very small in population size. Despite being the biggest of the provinces in Canada, the population is diluted due to harsh conditions. Nunavut's current population stands at about 39,403 people, with an estimated population of 50,300 by 2043. Taking a look at this population pyramid, the population of Nunavut is an increasing population, with the most of the population in the younger ages. The average death count of Nunavut from 2001 to 2021 is 156 deaths, with 2018 to 2019 having the most deaths. Culturally, most of the population are Inuits, one of the three Indian groups that are known to populate Northern Canada. Despite the majority of the population being Inuit, the primary religion there is Christianity, since Inuit shamanism is considered taboo and is not brought up in regular conversation. The number of immigrants that come to Nunavut yearly is extremely low, with the highest immigrant count annually at around 39, and the lowest at a measly 5. This is mainly because the violent conditions of Nunavut make it unfavorable for outside people to settle in such a cold, harsh climate, especially when there are more favorable provinces in Canada. However, the number of people immigrating is slowly going up as the years progress. As seen in this diagram, at first, the immigrant numbers were very low, but as the years go by, the number of immigrants are clearly seen to go up. The number of people emigrating out of Nunavut is surprisingly zero people, making it the only province in Canada that has zero emigrating people annually. Since Nunavut's population is extremely low, it would only make sense to have Nunavut's population density be low. On average, Nunavut's population density is 0.019 people per kilometer squared. However, the land is sparsely populated, with only few locations housing a significant number of people. Nunavut's capital city, Iqaluit, is by far the most populated city, housing over 7,000 people. True to Nunavut's rural nature, 51.1% of people live in rural areas while 48.9% of people live in urban areas. While this difference between urban and rural may seem even and insignificant, the average difference between rural and urban in Canada is a 80% to 20% ratio, marking a significant difference. The average unemployment rate in Nunavut from 2004 to 2021 is 12%, the highest the employment rate between 2004 to 2021 was 17% during 2011. The lowest the employment rate reached was 8.9% during 2007. 
based on a census in 2020, public administration is the most popular job application among the inhabitants of Nunavut. The second and third popular job applications were healthcare and educational, respectively. The three least preferable jobs were arts, recreation, and entertainment, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, and holding companies. We can infer from the least preferable jobs in this census that the Inuits have left their indigenous roots, as most of them no longer hunt, fish, or gather. In terms of energy consumption, Nunavut is the most sustainable and energy efficient territory in Canada. Because of the lack of a large population and unusable terrain to build large factories, Nunavut remains to this day a very eco-friendly territory. There are no petroleum factories, natural gas factories, or large-scale liquefied natural gas factories. The province uses 58% less energy than the national average and 85% less fuel compared to the national average. Nunavut's main source of electricity is from burning diesel fuel, and they get diesel fuel from small trucks or boats imported from other countries. The Quilk Energy Corporation is responsible for all electricity power in Nunavut. Due to the fact that Nunavut is an extremely eco-friendly territory, sustainability initiatives were not seriously considered. If sustainability initiatives were considered, Nunavut could implement the three R's rule. The three R's are reduce, reuse, and recycle. The Environmental Protection Division of Nunavut is issued with the responsibility to monitor and protect the environment. They are responsible for the impact of human activities on the environment and ways to help develop the environment. Recent news of Nunavut have been mainly centered around diseases found in the water. Recently, the tap water of Ekaluit have been considered safe to use. This includes cooking and boiling it. However, bathing is not recommended. An underground fuel spill ruptured, likely causing the water contamination. In Najat, a stomach illness was found. Symptoms of the illness include diarrhea, stomach pain, fever, and vomiting. On January 7, 2021, it has been reported that COVID cases in Nunavut have risen by 35 people. This increases the territory's total COVID cases to 274. Ekaluit is the site that has the most COVID cases, at 73. Thank you for spending your time listening to the human characteristics of Nunavut. On the surface, Nunavut appears to be violent and inhabitable. But don't be fooled by this disguise. The human characteristics are as vibrant as any other territory or province. As you spend the time to visit the cities, you will be rewarded with not only stunning landscapes, but also a cultural utopia.